54. Actually, 60, 54, Clark. Judge Paul Wallace. And Brent Bovell. Score it. 57, 57. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a draw. Who wants to see? Where do, where do you think the fight was it all yours? And did you feel you ever had him? Or um, he definitely was a little hard to get a hold of. He was moving around pretty good. Um, that's I do give that to him. He definitely moved around pretty good. I couldn't could never get him in a spot where I wanted him. At. Um, um, he definitely he did a, he did a good job of, of keeping the fight ugly, keeping it ugly. He never let me get established in the rhythm. That was a good job. Of um, yeah. well, what do you think of? How did you feel right at the end of the fight? Did you feel you had it? Did you think he, it was a, too right, questionable? Or? Right, at, right at the end of the fight, um, I, I felt like it was probably going to be a draw. Um, I felt I felt like and right at the end of the fight, my feelings was the referee let him get away with a lot of stuff. I felt like he shouldn't have probably let him get away with like he let with his head a whole lot. But then I realized I had to step back and think, look, you can't make excuses when you go this. You got you to gotta perform, go out there and perform regardless of what happens. Sometimes it's going to get into a fight like that where some guy goes <laughs> and stuff. Uh, what was your corner telling you going into the last round? Because that was, it was uh, pretty tight at that point. Um, yeah, my my manager, Jake, he told me, he was like, uh, you read this round. Um, my trainer, he was telling me I needed to, I needed to establish a jab a little bit more, maybe step back and with some uppercuts. Um, I tried that once or twice throughout the round. Um, I, I, I landed one of them, and then after that, he wouldn't let me do it again. Um, but it's definitely just a, just a good learning experience. It's definitely just a learning experience. You went down a little bit. That was a slip, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he kind of like tossed me off of yeah. My foot was tied up with his, and he tossed me off of Cool. cool. All right, the fight journal.com here with Dangerous. Donald Wallace, sir. You, you gave us a thrilling fight tonight. Uh, what are your thoughts, first of all? Um, Like I, like I was saying earlier, uh, it was it was an ugly fight. It was an ugly fight. I got a little frustrated in there, and I didn't keep a clear head, and that kind of that kind of took away from me in the fight. Um, it's a lesson learned, you know. You know, moving forward, I keep that in mind that you know it's going sometimes things going to happen in that ring that you may not like. You can't let it get to you. You still got to do your job at the end of the day. Now it, it was a majority draw, but one of the officials scored it a little too wide, in my opinion. I mean, did did. Did that bother you? I mean, it did. Of course it bothered me because I felt like it was no way in the world he won all six of those rounds. But, hey, different people got different point of views, and I respect that. I, I thought you started out slow. I thought he outworked you early, but then I thought you landed the harder shots as the fight went on. And as I sat next to the ring announcer, the uh, not the not the ring announcer tonight, but the uh, unofficial who usually does DMV, he, he thought you squeaked the fight out with your rally late, especially in the final round. I mean, if you agree with that or? Um, I I kind of felt the same thing that I probably did in the beginning. I even went back to my corner after the first round and told him, uh, I think I gave that round away. Um, but I definitely felt like toward the later rounds, once I started picking up and tr trying to find my rhythm a little bit, that I definitely edged a little bit of the rounds, and I thought I was going to get a close, close win, or if not a split decision win. Um, but like I said, I'm not, I'm not upset with the draw. I can respect okay. it, and I can. The guy is 16:54. I really, uh, I can okay. I respect your opinion, sir. That's all I can say. <laughs> okay, now uh, prior to tonight, your other two, the other two opponents you faced, I believe they had winning records. Yes. Um, so, three fights, three guys who were above 500. Listen, man, I see guys who are 18, 19, 20, and 0 with opponents who none of them had a winning record on their ledger. So, I mean, what? what that, that says a lot about you. I mean, is it just 
You're facing all comers, you're going to take on. That's me, man. Like, I I look at some of these guys that's at the top now, and I'm not taking nothing away from any of them. They all are amazing fighters. Um, You got a lot of guys at the top who could fight pretty good. But I look at that path, and I know that's how boxing is today, but that's not how I want to be. I don't want nobody to look back on my record and say, oh, this guy was just, he just cherry picked his way here. No, man, I'm going to fight any and everybody. Anybody who want to fight me, I fight them. That's going to look better on me at the end, I think, I believe, because they're going to look at me and see how hard I work to get where I am when I'm at the top. Now, fans wanted to hear, they cheered, they wanted to hear uh, when, when the announcer asked, did they want to see a rematch? If you had it your way, what would be next? Would it be a rematch? Um, I'm always up for a rematch, especially when things go undecided that way. You know, it's a draw. Nobody likes a draw. Um, you always want to see either a winner or a loser. So I'm always up for a rematch. Um, but... You know, if that doesn't happen, then it doesn't happen. Or well, maybe we can get together sometime down the road, maybe for a bigger fight or something. Um, but I'm not, I'm not taking anything off the board. I'm up for anything. Okay, and I know you. I know your time is uh, short. Let me let me ask you a couple quick questions just to educate the fans. Some of your favorite boxers all time, um, present, past. All time, definitely Floyd Mayweather. I gotta give him one of one of my favorite fighters. Um, Roy Jones Jr. is a, is a big is a big big favorite of mine. Um, I watch I watch a lot of Lomachenko lately. He's a, he's an up and coming fighter. I mean, he's definitely top of the game right now, but you know he still still has a lack of experience, so we can't really give him that number one pound for pound title. Um, I like Mikey Garcia. I think he has a lot of a lot of nice fundamentals. He's, he's really fundamentally sound. Um, and I like Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford and my favorite my favorite right now just because he got he's an excited fighter and that's Triple G. He's my favorite fighter right now. Just as, I like watching him. I got a lot of respect for Guillermo Rigondeau, but look, he's a really boring fighter to watch. But I respect I respect his abilities. Okay. okay. You uh you got you got some people on your team here that was shouting some shouting some good instruction to you. Uh, who who's, who's this? We got. Um, this is my stable mate named Ernest Hall. Okay. Like and bug. bug. Yep. Two and zero. Oh. One knockout. Hey, keep up and coming with me, man. We going to the top together. Okay, y'all give me some uh some you got any social media so people can follow um, you? You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat at Wally T V E, W A L L Y T V E. I'm the best ever. <laughs> <laughs> and same here, you can follow me on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram under Ernie Bug. That's it. Okay, your fans, there you have it. You missed a great one tonight. Hopefully we can get it on YouTube and show you what you missed, but Thank you both, gentlemen. No problem.